Hi everyone, my name is Elena from JPOP Support, and today I'm going to show you how to configure Conda repositories in Arda Factory. So let's get started. Okay, before we begin, let's see we have Conda installed on our machine. So let's run Conda. And we can see that we have the Conda client. That's great. Now let's move on to Arda Factory. Okay, so we have our artifact right here. Let's do a login. We have our credentials set. Let's log in. Great, we're logged in. Now, let's create our condo repositories. For this demo, we'll use the quick setup tool. This tool allows us to quickly set up a local, remote, and virtual repositories. So, we'll choose condo. Great, let's choose a prefix. For this example, I'll use dev. Let's create. Great, all repositories were created successfully. Now we'll configure our client to work against our factory. So we see our repositories are created. We have the virtual repository, the local repository, the um, remote repository and the remote cache repository in which our factory will uh, cache the artifacts. So let's go to our virtual repository and let's click the set me up button. Here we'll have information on how to configure the client and later we'll see how to resolve the packages. So let's put our credentials here. And here we can see the snippet that our factory provides us. So in order to, for the Conda command line clients work against our factory, uh, we first need to set the Conda repository in the .conda RC file. So our factory has the file already ready for us. So what we're going to do is copy it to the clipboard. But first let's see uh, what the file contains. So we have the first uh, line that actually what it does, it makes kind of client use the specified URL uh, when we specify the dash C flag during the package installation. Second line adds our factory to existing list of kind of channels uh, to be used by the client. And we have the third line in the snippet that redefines the list uh, of default channels to be used by the client and restricting only to our factory. Great. If we want, uh, we can disable the client SSL validations and end the SSL verify false flag. For this example, we'll just copy the snippet and we'll head to our terminal window. Great. So we're in the terminal window. Now let's go to our uh, Anaconda root directory and create the conda rc file. So I'll go to root anaconda. We'll see what we have here. Great. So now let's create the conda rc file. Let's paste the snippet we copied earlier. Here I'm going to change the IP address to localhost as my artifact tree is configured on this localhost machine. Great. Let's save the file. Great. So we have the .conda RC file. And now we can configure the client to work against our factory. So let's give it a try. Let's install for this example, an Nginx package. We'll use the conda install command and install Nginx. We'll proceed. Great. Let's go back to our factory. Okay, let's head to our repositories. Let's refresh the repository. Great, we can see that we have some folders here. 
And we have some packages that we have just resolved. So as part of the resolution, we can see that we have a few packages in the virtual repository. If we'll go to econ the remote cache, we will see that the packages are now cached in our repository. Great. Let's use another example. Let's say we want to uh, upload some package to the Conda local repository. We can do the following. For this example, I'll use JFOX CLI. You can use curl as well. This is up to your uh, preference. So let's do the JFOG RT U for upload. I'm sorry, RT U. Let's mention what file we want to upload. So for this example, I'll take this file. And we need to mention the repository name. So this will be great. You can see we have success. And we can see that we have the package right here. This is how you configure the Conda client to work against Artifactory. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed this short video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.